the paramagnetic source. It's exactly the same principles and same idea, but applied to a much smaller magnetic moment and therefore a much smaller temperature. Um, now the two numbers that you see up there, the Bohr magneton, which I've spelled wrongly, not magneton, but magneton, and the nuclear magneton. Now, you know how to calculate the magnetic um, dipole moment, right? You normally take the Bohr magneton and you multiply this by the angular momentum J, for example, to get the, the actual dipole moment. So, and the J is usually a small number, one, two, three, or four. So, just by looking at the magneton, gives you an idea of how big this, this magnetic dipole moment is. And we can get a quick comparison of the electron and the nuclear magnetic moment by comparing the two magnetons. And you can see for the Bohr magneton is 10 to the power of minus 24, nuclear magneton 10 to the minus 27. So it's more than a thousand times difference. All right? And in our reasonings about the um, about the interaction field is is correct. This would mean that we might just be able to achieve a temperature which is one thousand times smaller with nuclear cooling compared to using paramagnetic salt. And we are talking about the micro Kelvins here. Okay, so let's have a look. Lots of words there. <coughs> okay. Um. Okay. Um. Now this is just to point out some of the issues when you switch to nuclear cooling. So one of the things is that we would use a metal now. And we would make use of the nucleus of a metal instead of a salt. And we often use copper. So you would have a big block of copper for this refrigerator. That would be your refrigerant. Okay? And you often need a very high starting fuel for reasons that we'll see uh, in a moment. And we are talking about fields that are typically a few tesla, maybe eight or nine tesla or more. Now, such field is extremely strong fields. And the way that you can produce this field is to use superconducting magnets. So you have seen these pictures of these in the video clip from the last lecture. All right. If you if you want to produce this field with a solenoid and an electromagnet, <coughs> you need extremely high current. <coughs> and the resistance in a in the normal wire will give out a lot of heat and it will be very difficult to achieve the high current unless you make the wires superconducting. So that's where superconducting magnet comes in. You need a very high field to do the magnetization and demagnetization. And even then it turns out that you can't, you still can't reduce the entropy by very much. We will look at this, the, the physical reasons for this. So let's just look at um, how the entropy depends on the magnetic field and the temperature. Let me sketch the graph here. Now, in the case of copper, um, if you start at zero tesla, it turns out that um, if you apply a few of eight tesla, the entropy curve, it might look like this.
And then even if you start at a temperature of which is quite low, say 10 millikelvin, you'll find that you're quite close to that bit there. Okay, simply because the corresponding temperatures here at the zero Kelvin curve is that much smaller, is in the micro Kelvin range. Alright, so a reasonable starting temperature would be 10 millikelvin because you have to start, the lowest you can start, uh, temp the, the lowest temperature you can achieve without a nuclear refrigerator is to use the dilution refrigerator. And that, that brings you to something like 10 millikelvin or a bit less. But even if you start there, in the case of copper, you'll find that when you use a, uh, an extremely strong fuel of say 8 tesla, you can only bring down the entropy by a little bit because you are there. Okay, you are very near the top. Now you can also see now that the formula uh, that I derived just now for the entropy, the 1 over T squared high temperature formula, you can also see why it might come in handy. Because we are, we are working in that regime in the case of nuclear refrigeration. Okay, so the approximate formula for entropy would be useful here. Okay, so that's what uh, th these two slides are about. And in order, and just lowering this entropy by a little bit is, is not good enough because uh, <coughs> because this very small decrease here also means that the decrease in temperature might not be so much. Now let's take a look at the physical uh, what happens physically to the entropy at the, and, and the energy levels when we go to such very small magnetic moments. Okay. In this picture, what you see here is a sketch of the energy levels. Now if the magnetic moments are very small, that also means that the energy levels are very close together. Okay, so for a given temperature, you'll find that because these levels are very close, you tend to have more particles in the higher levels for the same temperature, okay, according to Boltzmann factor. All right, if epsilon is, if the energy is small, the Boltzmann factor is actually bigger. Okay? So if you have more particles in the higher level, that also means higher entropy. Because entropy is about the number of ways you can arrange these atoms, right? You, you, have, you have that formula, simple formula for entropy. So, if you have more particles at the higher level, there are more ways you can arrange the particles among the energy levels. So you would have a higher entropy. That refers to this bit of the graph. Okay. So, in order to lower the entropy, you will have to increase this level. And you do that by increasing the magnetic field. And because if you increase the magnetic field, there would be fewer particles in the higher level. So as a result, the entropy will drop. But this is difficult simply because the, the energy levels are so close to start with. Compared with the paramagnetic sort, the energy levels are closer by more than 1,000 times. This is very close. So you cannot expect to increase the energy level by 1,000 times by using 1,000 Tesla, because such fields don't exist. So we try to do the best that we can. We go up to close to 8 or maybe 9 Tesla to increase the spacing as much as we can. Okay, but so now we can see why it's difficult simply because the fields are so close. Okay. So that was the problem 